start our next session now. The first speaker in this session is Navid Gornal. He, uh, he makes experimental interactive physical experiences and he works in advertising. His talk is titled Eating Your Own Face and I'm looking forward to hearing about how you can do that. Give a hand for Navid. Thank you. Hi. You know, it's funny actually. I've been chatting to some people and I realized actually because of the industry that I'm in, I don't tend to uh, talk tech with a lot of people. Um, it's generally quite like high level. Uh, I don't get to go into details. And it's at places like this that I realize that I'm saying words and phrases that I've actually never, that have never come out of my mouth before. I've only ever heard it or read it. So it's really cool to be, uh, to be part of that today. So uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be telling you today how you can eat your own face with technology. And uh, I, I'm not gonna give you too many details now, but I can assure you it will be, it'll be delicious. So um, first of all, I'm Navi Gornel. I'm a creative technologist at a big London agency. Um, we make adverts, uh, predominantly films, or most things end up as a film at some point, uh, but we would create a film using um, technology. So I'm gonna tell you about some of the tools that we've used. So uh, we work with brands like uh, Dove, Hellman's, Expedia, British Airways. The chances are, if you've ever watched television, you've seen something that we've made. Now, at, at my office, uh, and actually in the kind of industry in general, uh, any Rick and Morty fans here? Uh, yeah. I, I find that uh, when I'm explaining technology, I get this like bl kind of bl blank stare, and they, 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 they kind of just want you to just like break it down and talk in layman's terms. And, I, and I've kind of realized, after a number, a numerous of the conversations like this, that when I start explaining how something works, they're hearing this. Today on how they do it, plumbuses. Everyone has a plumbus in their home. First, they take the dingle bop and they smooth it out with a bunch of schleam. The schleam is then repurposed for later batches. They take the dingle bop and they push it through the grumbo where the fleeb is rubbed against it. It's important that the fleeb is rubbed because the fleeb has all of the fleeb juice. Then a schlami shows up and he rubs it and spits on it. They cut the fleeb. There's several hizzards in the way. The blamps rub against the chumbles and the plubis and grumbo are shaved away. That leaves you with a regular old plumbus. You guys all have plumbuses, right? You don't have one? Everybody has a plumbus. So replace you know, schlieb and fleem with uh, solder, and that's basically you know, what, what we do. So uh, I'm going to go into uh, a level of granularity that I don't get to go into very often. So um, I'm going to take you on a magical whirlwind tour of a few projects that I've worked on over the last few years, um, mostly involving white creamy pastes. So here's a little uh, video of uh, what I've been up to for the last, last uh, 18 months. <laughs> It's an unfortunate reality when you work in advertising that about 90% of your ideas will never go anywhere. And about uh, maybe only 10% of what you saw there actually got built or finished. So 
we're going to talk about a white creamy paste. Uh, do you guys have Hellman's here? You guys know Hellman's, right? Hellman's called Best Foods in some countries. Uh, it's a mayonnaise. It's kind of delicious. Um, and they came to us with a really interesting brief, and that was how can we make summer eating more exciting? Because actually, the practicalities of summer eating are that you get flies in your food, and you get uh, you know people like overcooking your, your burger and, and burning it, and you know there's all these little things that actually kind of make it a bit a bit crap. So that we wanted to make it better. So it's quite a, quite a cool brief to work on. So um, they they brought they brought me in to kind of uh, inject more of a like a hacker uh, attitude to this brief, and so um, the purists of you, you know, may kind of interpret this as like bastardizing the theme of hacking, but really when it, what it boils down to is the product is itself uh, a way of hacking food. So it's, we're not we're not you know playing with electronics here. We're not it's not it's I guess it's still technically hardware, right? So we're hacking hardware, but it's edible. So this is a little manifesto video that we made. And so what we created was four hero hacks. We had the Hellman's solar lantern jar, we had the barbecue, the DJ powered barbecue, and burger selfies. So I'm going to talk uh, mostly about burger selfies, and I'm going to show a few clips of the DJ powered barbecue because, because it's DJ powered barbecue. So burger selfies. Um, it was based on three trends. Food trucks, 3D printing, and selfies. And so we combined them together to come up with this idea. And when we were working out how we were going to build it, we kind of looked at what existed already, what had been done that was similar. And some of you may have seen the uh, Google Chrome Labs experiment where you could scan your face with a webcam and it would, uh, it would draw your face in sand. And a really lovely project. Um, they actually open sourced it as well. So you know, at, at one point we started building something similar. Uh, and I can see why they use sand now. Sand is a lovely medium. It's it's clean. It's not greasy. It's like consistent. Um, <laughs> and so we thought, okay, yeah, I, I, you know, mayonnaise it can't be much harder than sand, or can it? So I have to admit, I, I try not to let physics get in the way of a good idea, uh, but I, I don't think I was fully prepared for some of the technical challenges that printing uh, mayo faces on burgers would create. Um, when we first discussed the idea, it was actually going to be a fully automated system uh, that was all app driven, where the machine would just, you just hit a button and it would just go. But the realities um, are quite, quite different. So with the help of another technologist, uh, we wrote a software program that would uh, take your face, um, create some outlines, and spit out G-code. And uh, that did not produce good results. And it's interesting because we didn't, you, when you start working on a, pro on a project like this, <laughs> you, it, it, kind of, uh, it, it kind of brought up some quite profound questions like, what are the things that make you you? Like, what are the features? Of, uh, of this guy's face that make him look like this. So, and it really, you have to um, create a caricature of, of a face um, when you're dealing with a medium that is not the most expressive. And the canvas itself is, is it's a burger, it's an undulating meat mountain. It's, it's, anyone that's done 3D printing will know that you need a, a level bed, and the burger uh, is not level, it's not flat. It's greasy, and every burger has a different Z height. So that presented a whole new range of, uh, of, of issues as well. 
So we end up creating a semi-automatic system where it would uh, do edge detection, but then we'd kind of draw on the lines manually just to make sure that the face was as true to the original face as possible. So the first result, the first uh, print was not so great. Not great. Uh, but you know, I, ha I have to say, um, and I'm going to talk about how we cr created this in a minute. But uh, this, was a, this was really emotional for me because uh, <laughs> so many hours had gone into to doing that, and it was the very first print. And uh, I was actually really happy with it. I think it looks great. Now, at the time, there was no commercial uh, paste extruder. It, it, wasn't on, it wasn't on the market. Sure, there's a few ones you, that you could you know, print on Thingiverse, but they, they, just did, they, were, they weren't kind of what, what we needed. Um, so I had to build my own. And I had, I had uh, just over a week to do it. Uh, this is a really, really fast turnaround project. Um, and it, we also had very little budget. Actually, we had about, uh, we had about 3,000 pounds for the, for the whole build. So it was really, really, really nothing. Uh, so what I did was I fired up SketchUp and created this. this and the engineers are uh, like, don't hate, don't judge. Like, I had no time. That's what I created. It, it worked sort of. Uh, <laughs> um, but it, so it, it, what we needed was a huge amount of torque to push a mayonnaise through a tube. Now, uh, I haven't had to refer to my fluid dynamics textbook since university, um, and I, I, well, I didn't really refer to it then either. I actually failed the exam. But uh, I, when I was working, when I was trying to push mayonnaise through this uh, PTFE tube with an inner diameter of, I think, four mil. Uh, I suddenly realized, uh, and I don't know why I, it took, took me so long to realize this, but mayonnaise is actually a non-Newtonian fluid. It's not a solid, and it's not a liquid. So when it comes to pushing it through a tube, it's really hard to predict how it's going to move, and it takes a huge amount of force. And this thing was, was bending and warping and creaking, and actually it had enough torque to crush an apple um, or your hand, but it was still struggling with, with the mayonnaise. So, this is when I bust out the thermodynamics textbook, realized I had no idea what I was doing, and I just ended up ordering a bigger tube. So that, that worked fine. Delta bots. We went for a delta bot design uh, because of aesthetics, uh, pure and simple. The reason we went for this design is because we wanted to mount a little mayonnaise bottle in the top. Uh, and it would have been much easier to go with a Cartesian style printer, uh, much, much easier. But uh, this was the kind of style we were going for, and we wanted to be able to brand it up because it's an advert after all. So this is the, the branded machine that you can see. This is our art director looking at it quite confused. And um, uh, by this point, uh, we had kind of made some progress on, on the quality of the prints. And I, I think this is, I think, I think this is pretty good. It's, that's me. Yeah, you can tell, yeah. Uh, that's also me. That's not. Uh, so we, we tried some geometric shapes. I, actually, we weren't totally sure that we could print a working face, and so what we decided was, well, let's just change the idea. So we're not printing self wings; we're printing shapes. So like w emoticons or the weather. So this was us trying that as a as a as a as a last attempt to kind of save the project, but. Uh, we developed more and more. We changed, played with different nozzle sizes. Uh, we hacked the, uh, the, the firmware. I mean, we were running off um, a mega, Megatronics board, which is basically just an Arduino Mega. So um, we made some changes in, in the software. And we started to get stuff that was, that was looking pretty good. This is our, this is our copywriter. So we, I mean, we realized that once we were testing on real burgers, and, and these aren't the burgers that you get in Tesco or in other supermarkets that are you know, produced by the million. And you know, are, are, you know, each one is exactly the same. These, these are actually, they were, they're called Juicy Lucy's. They were um, a delicious gourmet burger that was filled with cheese. Really tasty, but like really awful to print on. Um, and also, they used quite a, a, quite a luxurious beef. So <laughs> whenever you grilled it, whenever you, you cooked it, the, the, the fat would melt away, leaving these deep kind of troughs in the burger. So while delicious, it was a, you know, another problem for me to try and kind of work out. 
And so this is us uh, <laughs> testing on actual burgers. Um, so every, every, every morning, I would, uh, we, our office was in Canary Wharf until, until recently. So I would, uh, I would, I would, as soon as uh, GBK, Gourmet Burger Kitchen, a burger chain in the UK, and uh, Byron opened, it was 11 o'clock, I'd pop over and buy about 10 burgers from each one. And <laughs> I would use those for testing um, my prints each day. And what I would do is I would, I would eat probably five of the burgers, uh, and then choose the burger that, that was the flattest, and then I would just keep using that burger for the rest of the day. And so, like this burger has literally been used about 15, maybe 20 times. And each time we'd print on it, um, I would just kind of take it over to the, the bathrooms, rinse it under the tap <laughs> with some fairy liquid and some hand so uh, Dove soap, and um, and then I would gl glaze it, glaze it lovingly with some with some oil, and so, you know, like a real burger. And then I'd slap it back on the on the hot plate. And I actually didn't realize until about maybe maybe a week into this project, that two of the people around me were vegan. And um, it was when I said, oh, I can actually cook burgers using the hot plate. It goes to 100 degrees C. That was when they were like, right, no, I had enough. No, no hot plate. Uh, I, I, I felt bad. So now we were starting to get uh, stuff that sort of it looks like a person now, which I think is, is, a, is, a, is a good start. Um, and this is, a, this is a video of uh, the printer in action. In this case, uh, I'm kind of helping the extruder along um, by, by um, I'm doing the retraction on it. Because, the, because of the play in the mechanism, it wasn't very, um, it wasn't retracting. Um, I mean, I, anyone who 3D prints will know that if you want to avoid stringing, you run a, maybe if you're using a Bowden tube, maybe a three to five mil retraction after each like Z lift. So I, I was kind of just doing that myself. And so this is the final film. And if you look closely, um, you will see uh, me standing in the burger truck, just kind of sweating away. And that's how you eat your own face. So I should also add that most of the people that film were uh, actually members of the public. Um, there's only a handful of uh, Ogilvy employees. Um, so, uh, but most of the reactions were real. It really was something that people kind of loved. So onto the barbecue. So the idea here was to create a miniature barbecue, a one-person barbecue. Um, that would fit into a, into a Hellman's jar. And so it started off as a little sketch on a bit of paper. And then uh, we had about two days to, um, to build a prototype. And so this is, this is then what we did. So fired up SketchUp, marked down to this, this bad boy. Uh, what you'll notice is it's got a grill on the top with the Hellman's uh, <laughs> logo. So it burns the Hellman's into the burger and hopefully into your hearts. And uh, this was, we, th because times were so short, I, I, I just fired this uh, onto a Ultimaker Mark I uh, at its fastest setting, with horrible quality, and um, this was the end result. And what we then did was we used the oldest manufacturing technique to build a working barbecue because we wanted to show it, uh, we wanted to actually cook a burger with it before we showed it to the client. So uh, here's what we did.
the, the keen-eyed among you may notice that the burger uh, was from McDonald's. Don't tell anyone. Don't tell the client. Um, and I forgot to remove the cheese, which is why there was cheese all over it. But they bought it, so. And this is the final film. It's when you see this, uh, things like this getting shot that you dis discover all these little tricks. Like the smoke is actually an incense stick. And the, um, the, 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 charred, uh, the, the charred burger was actually spray painted on. It's quite, these are little tricks that uh, I learned from a production company. So that was the barbecue. And this is the case study film for the, uh, the whole campaign. So my favorite hack was actually the DJ-powered barbecue. And the original idea was inspired by a YouTube video of an object called the pyro board. I think some people will, will, will know this one. And a pyro board is essentially a steel box, sealed, with two speakers on either end, um, maybe uh, several hundred holes on the, on the top, and you fill it full of gas, you play music through the speakers, and the standing waves in the box cause areas of high and low pressure, creating um, uh, various flame sizes depending on the frequency of the music. So what that means in practice is you get uh, a really interesting effect where whenever there's a bass note, you'll see you know, big yellow flames and maybe uh, smaller flames in a different part of the board uh, for like a snare. So we took this to our production partner. Um, this is not really something that I could have made in an office. And uh, so they said, okay, so, so you, you, want us to, you want us to build a steel box and fill it full of gas, put some holes in it, and then light it. So you want to build a bomb. <laughs> and, and actually, to be fair, that, that kind of was what we were asking him to do. And so um, they were like, we can't, yeah, we're, we're not building a bomb for you guys. We've, you know, we, we do a lot of work for you, but we're not doing that. Um, so what we then had to do was work out how else we could do it. And so we kind of realized that we could kind of fake it. Um, it is advertising after all. We, we, we could kind of fake it using um, uh, uh, gas 
powered uh, sol uh, solenoid valves, uh, solenoid gas valves. And that's what we did. So we got an Arduino, hooked them up to the solenoids, we created uh, three channels, base, mid, and treble. And that meant that we could essentially recreate the effect. And so th this is the, the film that we created. This was actually a really funny shoot because the, uh, while it's quite a cool machine, it was the worst barbecue you could possibly imagine. It burnt the shit out of everything you put on it. Um, and so we had a food stylist there who was preparing our hero corn. And so we would put the hero corn on the grill and it would just be annihilated in about two minutes. And so uh, the producer would be shouting across the garden, we need more hero corn, one more hero corn. And, and we just went through like, like, I don't know, 30 of these hero corns. Um, and uh, another fun fact was, uh, again, most of the people in that video were just kind of our friends. And I actually didn't tell them that it was going to be for a shoot. I just asked if they'd come around for a barbecue. <laughs> and so uh, they were, um, I didn't actually realize this at the time, but they were presented with these delicious, beautifully styled plates of food, um, but they weren't allowed to eat them. And they were all starving, so uh, I felt really bad. It was actually quite cold as well. So they stood in my garden for three hours, pretending to dance, with, there was no music either, uh, with this delicious plates of food, um, trying to look happy, when deep down they were just so sad. And I, I felt even worse because one of uh, my friends even came around with some dessert as well, um, but she didn't get to eat it. So that's, that, that, that's it. Um, that's, uh, that's how to eat your own face and um, other interesting hacks in advertising. Thank you very much.